Series tonight we are extremely delighted to have uh, Herman, uh, Mr. Herman Ho, our former council chairman. Uh, he is so devoted to the development of CTU, in particular our student activities uh, and all, also Hong Kong uh, sports uh, activities. I just learned that Herman, you've been uh, coming back from the uh, Asian Games and tonight. Right? Yeah. Did you have a good time there? Uh, wonderful, wonderful time. One I was there for three whole weeks, <coughs> from beginning to end. Wow, well, you're such a busy person, and you managed to squeeze three weeks there. This is amazing. Well, because I was appointed as the chef de mission of the Hong Kong delegation, so uh, being a chef de mission, I have to be there throughout the time. So. Uh, I was there three days before the opening ceremony and stayed until the end, uh, waiting until the last person leaves, then I go. And I learned that this year we managed to get the best ever result, 46 uh, medals. Uh, yes, we did. So if you would like to know more about Herman, without any further ado, I would like to pass the stage to Herman. He has prepared some exciting video and information for all of us. Are you ready to listen? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, good morning, thank you for coming out this evening. I just like to uh, do a very, very brief introduction of myself. My name is Herman Wu. I was born and raised in Hong Kong. I uh, finished my secondary education uh, here and then I went to uh, UC Berkeley and I got a degree, engineering degree from the uh, College of Engineering. Came back, um, I won't tell you when, <laughs> then you know my age. Uh, okay, I joined my family business and then uh, after a few years I decided that uh, since I'm going to management anyway, I went to uh, uh, Harvard Business School. Uh, but I did not finish the, M I did not enroll in the MBA program, I enrolled in a program for, program for management development, uh, which is, uh, which was a uh, four months program, uh, but I can assure you it's very, very tough work four to five case studies every day. Um, except Wednesday, we are free. Uh, Wednesday afternoon is a break. Uh, also Saturday and Sunday. And then, um, actually, uh, sports is my family tradition. Uh, before I knew how to walk, I was carried by my mother to watch my father play tennis on a tennis court. So, um, uh, grew up with the game. I'm also a tennis player myself. Uh, actually, I did not. Uh, how do you say? I I, I, I did not uh, you know, apply for UC Berkeley. I went to the United States to play tennis. I wanted to be a professional tennis player, 
And uh, actually, I had uh, a summer there uh, in California, and uh, I was uh, picked up by the uh, tennis coach of UC Berkeley. He asked me whether I want to join the team. And uh, short discussion with my father, he said, you have to. So uh, I went into UC Berkeley, I uh, joined the team, and then I did uh, tennis and uh, study uh, concurrently. And then I uh, graduated and then I came back to Hong Kong and I still play tennis. I still play tennis about three to four times a week. Actually, before I came here this evening, I finished uh, three sets of tennis in my tennis club. Uh, it's very, very enjoyable, and uh, if you watch the news this evening, or tomorrow, probably this evening, later on, uh, you see me on TV too. I, uh, I, I had a press conference and uh, introduced a new tournament to Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Country Club, ITF. ITF means International Tennis Federation Senior Tennis Open. Uh, now I'm uh, president of the Hong Kong Veterans Tennis Association and since I took over the chair, uh, chairmanship uh, about four years ago, I tried to bring uh, professional senior tennis to Hong Kong. Well, not too much about uh, tennis. Uh, as I said, I was uh, appointed as Chef Jim Sean of the Hong Kong delegation uh, to the 18th Asian Games in the Indonesia. Um, Asian Games, I hope you all know, uh, it's uh, once every four years. Uh, it's a uh, competition among uh, 46 Asian countries, uh, the highest uh, level of its kind in Asia. Uh, and I was uh, really an honor for me to be the chef in show. Uh, somebody may ask uh, me, you know, what does the chef in show do? Uh, we take care of everything, Simple, simply uh, speaking. Uh, about traveling, accommodation, food, uh, participating into uh, competition, um, solve problems. Um, one thing I'd just like to share with you is that uh, we had a, quite a few emergency cases that needed my uh, uh, attention. We have a few uh, athletes, injured. You know, every time we all do, uh, you know, sport is about you know trying to uh, do your best. Sometimes uh, you overdo it, you get hurt. Um, we have seven. We had seven uh, emergency uh, medical cases, uh, which needed my. Uh, I'm not a doctor. But if they have to be, you know, sent back to Hong Kong, my approval is needed because uh, we need to have the extra etiquette travel. And also an injured uh, athletes, we need special attention at the airport. Uh, the uh, government help us to uh, clear immigration and customs and then take a helicopter from the airport to Queen Mary Hospital. Uh, we had... Uh, three evacuation cases during the three weeks. Uh, fortunately, all of them uh, came out fine. Uh, okay, before I go on, I'd just like to uh, show a uh, video to all of you, which uh, uh, give you an idea of uh, what a uh, you know, uh, major uh, multi-sports um, sports competition is all about. Let's go global! It was a dream team resort for Hong Kong's women on day 8 of the 5th Asian Indoor and Martial Arts Games in Ashgabat. Uh, the quartet broke the short course games record in the 4x50 meter melee. In the time of one minute, that was also Jeffrey Michon, the national park, 2017. China, silver, and silver. Asian indoor games. I think we just, teamwork was the best one, so teamwork makes a dream work, and all the way across 
obviously very excited. Um, I think we did a good job presenting Hong Kong. And, you know, as the atmosphere has been great right here, uh, I think Ashkabat has been doing a great job in hosting games. Well, we're just happy. I, mean, I guess this model has been yes, unexpected a little bit, especially the game record. But it was China who started by night in the Ashkabat pool. But this well was the start of the show. The 19 year old broke the game's record to win gold in the 100 meter breaststroke in a time of 57.02 seconds. The teenager has won two golds and two silvers at the games. It was so important for me. I've got the gold medal. I was afraid to get second. 50 meters was tight. I'm so happy. In the weightlifting, Iraq, Safar, Al Jumali power to the fall to win gold in the 85 meter category. Anybody know where it is Ashgabat? Anybody in this room know where is Ashgabat? No. <laughs> Actually, this is not the video that I was uh, going to show you. I hope you find the uh, red one. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in 2017, Ashgabat was uh, Asian indoor games. It's a smaller event with uh, less countries participating. Uh, that's my PowerPoint. There should be another video. Is that the only video they sent you? Oops. Uh, sorry about that, maybe I go straight into my PowerPoint. Um, how do I do this? Oh, I wish I saw it. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, album of the uh, Asian game in Jakarta and Palabang. Mascots. I'm going to run very, very quickly because I've only given about uh, uh, 15 minutes and I think I've used about five already. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, schedule of the games. Okay, we get, uh, oh sorry, this is also, uh, this is 2014 in Incheon. Let's skip that. Uh, this year uh, we got eight gold medals. And uh, among the eight medals, uh, three from cycling. We have very, very strong cycling team. Uh, two from squash down there, you can see. Uh, one from uh, our equestrian girl, uh, one from gymnastic, and one from our rugby team. 18 silver medals and 20 bronze medals. I won't go into details because of time. Uh, this is our, uh, you know, uh, sending off uh, ceremony. Uh, the chief executive, Carrie Lam, presented the uh, uh, Hong Kong flag to us. This opening ceremony. And uh, Secretary of Home Affairs, uh, Mr. Lao Gong Wah, also uh, visited us. Um, now, this is uh, our aquatics team. Aquatics is a multi sports uh, event. Uh, other than swimming, on the right you can see our water polo girls team um, and our, uh, on the bottom our synchronized swimming or artistic swimming team. Two very young girls. Our fencing team, our fencing team is also uh, quite strong in Asia. They did not get any gold medal but they got eight medals in total. Um, I think, uh, yeah, two silver and six bronze. Uh, this is also the uh, our fencing team family. The question, Versace uh, is our first gold medal that uh, we got. Um, won by Jeffrey Seal. Uh, this is a very special event. Uh, is unisex, so men and women compete together. And she leads 
or the male counterparts. Uh, this is our cycling team. Cycling team also running medals, uh, three uh, gold, four silver, and one bronze. And uh, I'm sure you recognize AYC on the uh, bottom left corner. And uh, one person I just like you to recognize, I don't think I have my idea. Uh, he is a guy called Al Chen Wei. Uh, you will see him more and more uh, later on because uh, he is going to be uh, another cycling king after Wong Kem Ho. He got um, one gold medal and two silver medals. Now this one is a uh, uh, the bridge tournament. Uh, this is the first time that it appears uh, in Asian games. Somebody will would be wondering why bridge is a sport. Actually, this is very very tough. Um, other than using your brain, uh, you have to play long, long hours. Uh, 13 teams participated in the men's team. Uh, you have to play round robin. So you have to play 12 matches. Every match is uh, 24 boards, so 24 hands. So you can imagine how many boards you have to play before you get qualified for the final. And uh, I was asked to be the uh, trophy uh, medal presenter, and uh, because of the marvelous result that our bridge team got two silver and two bronze. And this is one game that, uh, you know, uh, the athletes are not young guys. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if you have any idea who is the oldest medal winner in this Asian Games? How old is this medal winner? Playing bridge. One, two, three. Okay. 75. It's a Malaysian lady. Uh, sorry, it's a Thai lady. Uh, and a competitor in this uh, bridge tournament. This is our table tennis team. They got two bronze medals. Uh, this is the uh, our um, what is it? Huma um, horse boat. Uh, he is he uh, make a record. He won the gold medal in Asian Games two times in a row. He got a gold medal in Incheon Asian Games. And he got a gold medal also this time. Um, our athletic team, athletics is also a multi sports uh, yeah, event. Uh, on the left, uh, Lena Yu, she is a um, uh, hurdler and uh, she is studying in Hong Kong U. Uh, also on the right hand side uh, is the um, high jumper. You're my wife. Uh, she is also studying in Hong Kong U. Uh, in the middle is a new event which we got a gold medal, a bronze medal. Is a uh, mixed triathlon. Usually, triathlon are being done by one person, uh, swimming first and then cycling and then uh, you know running. But this event is a mixed team: two men, two women finishing the events. And down at the bottom is the, uh, the whole athletics team. Our rugby. Rugby girls and uh, rugby men. And the men's team got the gold medal this time. And uh, it was very, very exciting. Last two Asian games, they lost to Japan. And this time around, they beat Japan 14 to nothing. And uh, they, everybody was very, very excited about it. Uh, our martial arts team 
On the uh, top is the um, uh, Taekwondo team, on the left, Karate team, and on the right, Judo team. A windsurfing team. A windsurfing team is also very strong in Asia. This time they got four silver medals. And on the right middle is our archery team. And then our uh, hop cheering team. All these parents flew all the way from Hong Kong to Indonesia to cheer for their sons. Bowling team. Bowling team, uh, we got very good results. Uh, we get two silver medals this time and uh, Squash team is uh, something that we are most proud of. Uh, they have four events. Individual men, individual women, uh, men team, women team, and Hong Kong team made it to all the finals. And then on the uh, right hand side, you can see the men's final is Hong Kong versus Hong Kong. So we got both the silver, uh, gold and silver. And also in Asian games, we have many other sports, Wushu. Wushu, we have one silver, one bronze, beach volleyball, shooting, tennis, golf, badminton, we got a silver medal. Sports climbing also made it to Asian games for the first time this year. Sailing, paragliding, of course, triathlon. Uh, paragliding is a bit dangerous. Um, we have quite a lot of injuries uh, in the event, and I was told by um, some of my uh, friends in other uh, delegation that uh, quite a few of them, uh, they made it to Asian Games also the first time this year, and uh, their athletes are very, very excited and want to get a medal. Some of them try not to open their parachutes until the last moment. And uh, this is why a lot of injury. One of our Hong Kong girls also got injured and um, uh, hurt her spine during the landing and we also had to send her back uh, right away. And then, uh, welcome home. So, this quickly give you a roundup of uh, uh, what happened in the Asian game uh, this year and um, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Ray? Yes, I'm going to have uh, the first question. Thank you so much, Herman. You are a wonderful person that opened up my mind what is happening in the Asian game. In fact, I've never been to any Asian game. Herman, you love sports since uh, you are young. Yes. And you are always a big fan of tennis. Has the uh, Asian game actually changed your perspective in, in a lot more other games? That's my well, point. of course. Um, uh, Asian Games, uh, we have uh, about 46 uh, events and uh, being the uh, Chef de Mijon, I have to uh, try and get to know them, uh, know the sports, how it's being competed, uh, know the players, know the managers, know the coaches. So before I went there, uh, after I know that I will be the Chef de Mijon, I visited each and every one of them. I, uh, each and every uh, national association uh, see what what they need, what I can do for them before we went. Right, because you inherit your uh, father's uh, wonderful genes, so you are also very good in uh, tennis. So my question underlying is actually for our students. We hope your insight could inspire them because as a student, they they, they, they need to handle so many different things, and at some point they may not know what they're really good at. They need to explore and they need to develop themselves. Could you like uh, give them some advice on how they actually can speed up this process and eventually they will find out what they're really good at? Actually, from the bottom of my heart, I think um, taking up sports will help every one of you. Not just that you have a good health. Good health is the uh, you know, probably primary factor you need 
when you go out to the society and try to uh, you know compete with uh, everybody else. Uh, but most importantly, you know, picking up uh, passion with sports will help you to develop your career. Uh, take myself for an example. Uh, actually, I, uh, although tennis is my primary uh, love, I also play a lot of other things. Uh, when I was in high school, I was captain of my volleyball team. I was captain of a uh, tennis team and I was uh, president of my uh, of the sports club in my secondary school. Um, after I came out to work, I uh, you know I make a lot of friends on tennis courts, on golf courses, on uh, squash courts, and it helped my to uh, develop my business. Uh, make friends with them. We exchange ideas. We help each other, and uh, especially when I uh, when we try to develop our business in mainland China, uh, you know, games like uh, tennis, golf, bridge. Actually, I uh, I was a member of the uh, Hong Kong International Bridge Team when, uh, in the early eighties. Uh, so I know the game, so uh, I had the uh, privilege of playing the game with Deng Xiaoping. Uh, yeah, in the 80s. Uh, so, you know, when you play with these uh, elites, uh, then the other people know that you have a connection with them, and at least they will not treat you unkindly. <laughs> so, it helped my business, it helped me to uh, develop uh, my business uh, everywhere I go. And also, uh, I served as the uh, Honorary Secretary of Hong Kong Tennis Association in the 80s and 90s, and then I was Secretary General for the Asian Tennis Federation uh, in the 90s. Uh, my Asian Tennis Federation, my territory covers from Japan, to the Middle East and Mongolia down to Indonesia. I'm supposed to uh, promote tennis, the game of tennis, uh, in this uh, territory. And I get to know a lot of top people within I, this region. I like Federer. Uh, sorry, Federer is in Switzerland. <laughs> He's not under my jurisdiction. But I get to know a lot of uh, princes and princesses. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, member of the royal family in Indonesia, in uh, Sing uh, in, not Singapore, Malaysia, uh, those places. Uh, also, um, you know, before everybody uh, you know knows about North Korea, I already try I try to uh, you know promote the sport of tennis in North Korea. So actually, you, you can do a lot with sports. And uh, feel free to ask any question if you have any. Yeah, we learned the uh, CPU where it's a PEK club. Uh, we are not having this competition. And coming up next, we actually have uh, the tennis uh, competition, right? Uh, Fiona, right? So why don't you let us know more about our team? Is there any PEK team member here? <laughs> yes, you see the raising hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, so all there are two here, your speech is it's a really wonderful speech, a beautiful speech, yeah. Um, but I'm wondering, like, there are so many students that they love doing sports, but there are few students or few people can make the sports a career as successfully as yours. So could you, like, share some experience or some key points for us to Make the make your habits or make your uh, make the things you love as you can do that that great. Can you like give some key points or something? Yeah, thank you. I think the key point is the willingness to serve. You know, something that you don't just do it for yourself. You try to serve the tennis community. Uh, I joined the uh, Tennis Association. I contribute my time to uh, develop the sports in Hong Kong first, and then I was nominated to be to the Asian Tennis Federation. I have uh, quite a few friends in Korea as well. Uh, 
Um, some of them are also very high in the uh, government uh, hierarchy. So, uh, so you need to have a heart to serve and the uh, willingness to go out. So then you need a lot of uh, friends and influential people. Not just being a, um, a tennis player. In sports, other than being an athlete, there are also many other avenues to serve. Uh, if you're good, you can be a coach, but if you only love the sports, you can be an umpire. I have a lot of friends serving tennis as an umpire. They also go around all over the world to serve the game. And you don't need to be very good playing tennis in order to be an umpire or official. Right, I think uh, Bohemia has a quick question here. Please. Um, thank you, Herman. So I want to know, um, like, can you share um, one unforgettable experience in the Asian Games to us? Because I think like you must be, you and team must be experiencing a lot of happiness or even sadness. So I want to know like which experience that you want to share with us. Thank you. First, I think the most happy moment was to attend the uh, Horse vote final. Okay, because uh, Sheikh Wai Hong is defending his gold medal, and we know that he has the ability to do so. So, being the uh, the uh, gold medal holder, he is the last one to come out. But before him, we saw a lot of uh, excellent performance, especially. The Korean player, uh, the, the athlete, did a almost flawless um, jump. And then it came, it came the Indonesian athlete. Uh, it was near perfect, but not quite. But still, the judge gave him very, very high marks. Then we all talked to ourselves okay, uh oh. It's very difficult for uh, Shaq this time. But Shaq came out and did an equally good or flawless jump. And finally, he beat the other two athletes by a very, very thin margin. And we were so impressed. Uh, but uh, we were especially impressed because before the games, Sheikh Wai Hong was injured and he was really pushing himself to the limits. We all know that. And then after he got the gold medal, we, were, we, we had a chat. Okay. He said purposely he did not come out to see the performance of the other competitors. He stayed in the warm-up area. He did, he did not and was not affected by the performance of his uh, you know, uh, other competitors. This is why sometimes uh, you need to have, you know, other than the skills you acquire, you have to have very high EQ in order to handle the stress and pressure. Um, I will give you one very unhappy example. Uh, we had a uh, very unfortunate incident uh, in one of the uh, hockey games. Uh, you know, hockey, you, uh, it's uh, really a contact sport. Um, one of our uh, girl athletes collided with his opponent or her opponent, and then she lied on the ground. And then when our doctor went out there, he did not move her because half the body was paralyzed. And then the game was stopped by the uh, uh, referee. Nobody dared to move her. Uh, I think uh, later on when we got her into the hospital, we had an uh, X-ray and then an MRI. Uh, her neck was twisted quite badly. 
Um, the doctor said if it was twisted for one more centimeter, mm. she would have died. And uh, it was really a very, very uh, unfortunate incident. And then uh, we tried to, uh, and nobody in Indonesia dared to touch her. Um, then our own team doctor uh, said that uh, you know we have to send her back to Hong Kong. Uh, she was in stretches, but Cathay Pacific was fully booked because if we want to ship her back or fly her back in stretches, you have to take away four seats. So we have to buy four tickets, and then. Uh, we, uh, all the CX flights were full, I don't know why, very good business. We waited for two days. Uh, and then uh, we, uh, we were very, very um, concerned. You know, every day um, I went to the hospital and uh, tried to speak with her. And then fortunately, after two days, uh, you know, she could move and then she could sit up. So we bought her a business class seats and flew her right back. And uh, it was uh, really sad and unforgettable, but fortunately, after she came back to Hong Kong, uh, she recovered quite well. Now she is, uh, actually she, was, she is a, a professional hockey player, playing uh, hockey in, I think, uh, Holland. Now she is back on field. Uh, Today is a uh, professional game. There are many, many uh, similar uh, situations. Uh, this is why you need somebody, you need a chef to be shown over there to make quick decisions. And um, another unforgettable experience I have is with uh, rugby. Uh, for some very strange reasons, once you set the rules in sports, you don't change them. Everybody stick to their room. Okay, but somehow in a women's game, uh, the uh, technical delegates, which is the uh, you know the man in charge of the technicals in the game, uh, switch the order of play for some for, for no reason. And then the, uh, the team manager called me immediately and asked me to go to the rugby pitch. And then, uh, you know, I immediately appealed. After some, uh, some rounds of uh, back and forth, the game already started. And then immediately I had to write to the uh, games competitions uh, committee filing this complaint. Uh, at the end of the day, they found my complaint valid. But unfortunately, the game was already progressing and they were not willing to uh, play the games. We were uh, supposed to play a weaker team. So, because uh, we were number one in the group's um, uh, competition, but we were made to play a, uh, the ultimate champion. Uh, so we did not make it to the finals, uh, semi-finals. Uh, actually, we expected to get medals for both the men and women team. So after I went back, I wrote another letter appealing, but. Um, to replay the semi-finals means a lot of trouble. And uh, they decided not to change it around. So uh, this is something that uh, is still haunting me up to now. And uh, I'm discussing with the rugby union to see what we can do to appeal after we yeah. Still, I haven't had an answer from the Asian rugby union. The story is really, um, some are very happy, some are really like, uh, for me it's very st uh, stress. And uh, I hope anybody, if uh, you... I'd just like to share another very, very exciting moment with you. It's uh, 
during the uh, bowling competition. Uh, bowling, uh, we were one of the strongest teams. And then in the men's team, uh, you, we, everybody had to play uh, 10 games in the, uh, um, in the heat and then qualify to the um, semi-finals. Uh, so after playing 10 games and then 10 more games in the uh, finals. So players have been playing 20 games already, each and every one of them. Very, very tired. Uh, in the last game, I think obviously the Korean team uh, has won by a big margin. So three teams are competing for the silver medal. Hong Kong, Japan, and Singapore. Cutting the long story short, we went to the last frame, last shot. The Hong Kong team needed a strike. I'm sure you know, or you know what a strike. To win, to get the silver medal by a margin of two points, two, uh, two things. And uh, our champion, Wu Xiu Hong, being a very, very experienced uh, bowler, gave us the strike. Yes, everybody is so tense when he threw the ball off. If he missed the strike, he got a nine points, we get a bronze. If he gets less than eight pins, we get nothing. So you can see you know, how tense everybody was over there. Uh, he gave us the strike and we got the silver medal. And uh, it uh, went, uh, you know, it sent all of us sky high, yelling, cheering, and uh, I almost lost my voice. <laughs> I'm sure very, very unforgettable. I'm sure everybody in Hong Kong, when they're watching the game, they, they're also doing the same thing. Yeah, since you know time is running out, we may need to take maybe two more questions. Yes. Sorry. And I got a question. Yeah, as we all know, you're a, a successful athlete. And I'm sure that you have met um, many successful athletes in your career. And so I'm wondering what qualities do you think is the most important for making a successful athlete? Yeah. Thank you. This is a very, very uh, tough question. First of all, I'm not a good athlete. Uh, I, yes, I wanted to be an athlete. Uh, but later on, I uh, quit tennis and I uh, concentrate on my studies and went to uh, join my family business. But uh, tennis is still my passion. I enjoy the game. And, uh, you know, when I was uh, young, in my 20s, I uh, totally enjoy myself uh, on uh, with sports. I I played football, soccer until the age of uh, 45, and uh, at that time, I think I spent more time on the sports grounds uh, more than my office. Uh, I'm still playing tennis four times a week. I still play squash. I'm still playing badminton. Um, uh, I'm an occasional golfer, but uh, I'm not a. I'm just a mediocre golfer uh, because I know I can't make it to the top. I can't be a single player. So when I get my handicap down to 18. I uh, stopped playing seriously because to bring my handicap down from 18 to 9 is uh, virtually impossible. So I uh, rather spend more time on the tennis courts. So I'm not a very, very good athlete, but to be an athlete in the league of uh, people like uh, Seth Wayopong, they want to see, you know, you have to be very, very committed devoted, try to give everything you have and uh, don't look at them just on the uh, medal stage. I am with them during the training, you know, 
they really give a lot, contribute uh, and sacrifice a lot of their time. Uh, you know, they might see. Oh, one thing I'd like to let you know: they might see. I saw her compete in the Asian Games. She won all her medals. Very, very. How do you say? Hey, so. How, how do you say that? Peace. Uh, you know, uh, he did not. Uh, she is doing it uh, very, very easy. You know, and I'm sure she is already world class. Not, you know, already exceeded Asian class. I'm sure she is going to bring us a medal in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. But uh, you have to see her train. She has to uh, sacrifice a lot. Training um, at least 10 hours a day, four days, uh, seven days a week. Uh, look at her thigh. Her thigh is bigger than a lot of us in this room. <laughs> and um, uh, she is. Uh, When cyclists, in the short distance uh, cyclists, they, they train. They have to, the coach said, you have to pump your heartbeat all the way up to 200. Just imagine your heartbeat. Usually, your, how fast is your heartbeat? 60, 70. But cyclists, they have to handle a heartbeat of 200. You know, continuously for like, uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then cool down, and then put your heartbeat up. So this is a lot of hard work. So being a good athlete, you have to be prepared to, uh, you know, work yourself to the game. I'm sure everybody's happy. <laughs> a very high now. Yes. As we know, uh, the video games yeah, become very popular now, and there is a a new project, the eSports become new project of the Asian Games this year, right? And how do you think about the, the eSports? Is a compromise to the public or is a great progress to the Asian Games? It's a good question. Good question. There are two demonstration sports in the Asian Games this time. One is eSports. Anybody here want to uh, what? guess which is the other one? A very, very interesting sport. It's called canoe polo. Doing. Canoe polo. Canoe polo. Canoe polo is uh, playing water polo with a canoe. Very, very interesting game. And yes, eSports is a uh, demonstration sport this time, not a medal sport. But uh, there are talks that uh, it will be a medal sport uh, in the next Asian Games. Uh, 2022 in Hangzhou. Uh, similar to bridge, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, is esports sports? And still, there are quite a lot of debates uh, around the world right now. But um, there, I can assure you, there are a lot of money in this game. Um, and. Um, China has already announced that uh, it will be metal sports in Hangzhou for years from now. And uh, with the development of uh, electronics uh, nowadays, uh, I just don't want to imagine what kind of esports will be uh, played four years from now. I'm sure there will be a lot more new games, um, new gadgets, coming out, so uh, all of us are still quite eager or patiently waiting to see the developments. But because of uh, the eSports being a uh, metal sports, uh, I'm sure the industry is going to grow very, very rapidly uh, around the globe. Perhaps it's also time for us, uh, our hall, different hall, to form the eSports uh, hall team. Anybody interested? 
<laughs> and this time there are six games being selected as uh, competition games in the esports. I can't memorize the names. But I know one of them is playing playing football. Okay. I, I do have my last question, but uh, not for Herbert tonight. It's actually for the student. I would like to know how many of you are actually from like a, a CTO, uh, like a central model, how our value, key value behind is to promote certain.